So if we're doing a facing and um, not a fitted faces facing, but a regular facing, let's say we wanted to face this neck or we wanted to face this arm side and do a sleeveless blouse, then I would just decide how big I want that facing to be. So I would draw, let's say I want it to be an inch big and an inch big, then I would just mimic the curve of what it is I'm trying to face. And this piece right here, I would trace that new, that piece becomes my facing. The face is that easy, or the facings. This, yeah. Yep, this, fa this piece that I just shaded in, that is the facing. So it's original outside seam line. It still needs to have notches to match up because you're signing it into this. I know she doesn't want to ride the bus. Um, you're sewing it onto this, so it would have to match this curve. And in here, you're going to finish this with either a serging or you're going to turn it under or whatever. I just need it big enough that I can wear it and not have it flick out when I'm moving. So I like it to have enough depth and enough weight that it will stay in place, uh, whether I'm top stitching that down or whether I need to attach it in some way to the side seam and up here so that it stays where it's supposed to. On here in the neck, same thing. If I wanted to do, let's say I wanted to do a two inch facing, I'd come down two inches, I'd come down two inches, I'd mimic the curve. That would become my facing. Now, what happens if I want to face the waist? or skirt, or pants, or whatever else, where you have a dart in the way. You have to close the dart first. No. On the actual, like on the actual back, I would not want to close the dart because I'm going to want to construct that dart in the outer piece of the article that I'm wearing. But on the facing on the inside, I don't want two darts stacked on top of each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would choose whatever my facing length is or width, I would cut that out and then I would either pivot this close or I would tape this close and this becomes my facing. So I'm just gonna um, cut these out right now and tape them shut so you can see how it looks. So we've got twig, when we turn this in, we're gonna have facing lines on the arm thigh, the neck arm. No. Nah. You're gonna choose what you want to face. Okay. Whether it's a skirt, whether it's the pants, whatever it is, you choose. And you're gonna turn in, like, I would turn in the back sloper and the facing as a separate piece. Okay. Okay? So, I am just gonna cut that there and I'm going to close my facing. And then I'm going to finish cutting out on this dotted line because I just couldn't see it. It's too teeny. And that would just clean up on my hemline. And that becomes my facing. Okay. okay. It's not the same shape now as the bottom. But if I were to close this dart, if I had closed this dart, then it would fit right down here at the bottom. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that process is the same regardless of whether you're doing pants, shirts, sleeves, necks, waists, hems, whatever. If you don't have a dart, then you just choose your facing amount and have it be the same contours as what it is you're facing. If there's a dart, you have it have the same contours as your thing you're facing but then you close the dart for the actual pattern piece. So you're not constructing darts on the facing and on the outer of the garment. 